Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation entitled Effect of Loop Delay in Voltage Mode Controlled DC-DC Converters. This is the outline of this presentation. We will see an introduction, the loop delay modeling, the effect on the dynamic response of DC-DC converters, and finally, an example and Q-SPICE verification. Here we have some relevant videos related to this topic, power electronics number 17, solving difference equations, power electronics number 71, improved dynamic model of current mode control DC-DC converters, and power electronics number 72, improved dynamic model of voltage mode controlled DC-DC converters. So today we are going to see another issue, which is the effect of the loop delay in the dynamic behavior of DC-DC converters. In the previous video, Power Electronics number 72, we saw this same slide and we talked about the closed loop operation of a DC-DC converter, as shown here. And we said that the loop gain, which is represented here as a function of the frequency, has to be designed in such a way that the crossover frequency is well below the switching frequency because otherwise we can have stability issues in the converter and this is due to the sampling effect of the generation of the duty cycle in the DC-DC converter. This is due to the operation of the PWM modulator. Today we are going to see that there is another issue that is going to affect the stability of our DC-DC converter in closed loop, which is the loop delay. So this is another reason why this crossover frequency has to be well below the switching frequency and particularly well below half of the switching frequency. In this slide we show this problem of the loop delay. Here we have the output of the compensator. This is the comparator to generate the PWN signal by comparing the output of the compensator with a sawtooth waveform. And then this signal here is sent into the driver to drive the switch. So from this point here at the output of the compensator until the generation not only of the gate signal for the switch, but also taking into account the response of the switch to generate finally this voltage here at the input of our converter, this voltage V sub 1, we are going to have a delay. We can have here even a delay in the comparator, but usually this is very small and most of the delay is given by the response of the driver and the response of the switch. So if the PWM signal is shown here, then the voltage V sub 1 is going to be something like this. It's going to have a delay with respect to the PWM signal. So this is an important parameter in our converter, T sub D, which is the delay between the PWN signal and the final voltage that we are applying to our converter. This delay time can depend on many factors. It depends on the type of driver that we are using. If this is an electronic driver with electronic circuitry, the Delay time is going to be small, but if we use maybe a um, pulse transformer to generate the pulses for the switch, the delay can be greater and also depends on the speed of the switch that we are going to use here. So now in this video, we are going to see how this delay time is going to affect the dynamic response of our converter. In this previous video, Power Electronics number 72, we studied the behavior of the PWM modulator and we saw that we have the behavior of the sampler, the PWM modulator itself and the zero order hold block. Now, if we want to consider the effect of the delay, then we have to add this new block because at the end, the duty cycle that we are generating is the duty cycle of this signal V sub 1 that we have seen in the previous slide. So as we know, the response of a delay in the Laplace variable domain can be represented as shown here is the E number rise to minus S times TD, where TD is the delay time. 
So the final expression that we have for the complete response of the behavior of the modulator and the responses of the different elements from the duty cycle, the final duty cycle that we are applying to our converter over the compensator output signal is assumed here. We have to multiply what we saw in previous video times the response of our delay block. Also, in previous video, we saw how to convert this into a rational function by using this approximation. So we can do similar thing for the delay. In this case, in order to avoid unnecessary complication, we can just approximate the expression of the delay using these factors here, one zero and one pole, so it's something like this. We could consider the second order response, but the approximation with this zero and this pole is good enough for most applications. So now we have everything using the expression that we have seen in previous video. We multiply this expression also by the response of the delay block, which is this one here. Here we have the values of the different parameters. And then we have that we get to conjugate poles due to the sampling effect of the modulator and due to the effect of the loop delay, we get an additional zero assume here with a positive real part and an additional pole assume here with a negative real part. Also note that the time delay is very small. So the time delay, if the converter is well designed, is going to be much lower than the switching period. So 1 over TD is much greater than the switching frequency. So this value here and this value here compared with 3F is usually much, much greater than the real part of the conjugate poles. Let's see here the frequency response of the delay block with more detail. So we say that we have a zero here on the right half plane and we have a pole with the same amplitude on the left half plane and this is the value of the frequency. Of course, the amplitude of this complex number here and the amplitude of this other complex number is the same. So the magnitude is always 0 dB, so it's equal to 1 in per unit value. So the delay block is not adding any value to the magnitude of our final system. But on the other hand, we do have a response on the phase of the delay block. So if we analyze this response here, we will see that at this frequency, omega sub d, or which is the same, the natural frequency f sub d, which is 1 over td times p. We are going to have at this frequency the phase lag of minus 90 degrees. So at low frequencies we have 0 degrees, which means that there is no phase lag. At this frequency we get minus 90 degrees, and then at higher frequencies, we even get a phase lag of minus 180 degrees. So this is a considerable phase lag that will add to the loop gain of our converter in closed loop and can decrease the phase margin of the converter. Let's see this with a little more detail. Here we have a screenshot of the WinPython script that we have used to study the effect of this delay time. This script is going to be available here on the GitHub side of this channel. So what we are plotting here is all the transfer functions that we have. The transfer function of the converter GD without considering any effect, nor the effect of the modulator, nor the effect of the delay. GM is the response of the modulator, considering the sampling effect. GC in green is GD times GM, so this is what we saw in previous video, is the response of the converter considering 
the sampling effect of the modulator and we can see here that it is decreasing the phase lag as we saw in previous video and now today we are adding here the delay response for a delay time of 1.6 microseconds and this is the transfer function of the delay block as we have just seen so we can see now in brown the response of the total system including the delay so we can see that in this area the phase is decreasing much quicker when we are considering the delay time so at the end this is going to affect the phase margin of our converter in closed loop because of the effect of the delay time the phase margin of our system is going to decrease so the system goes more into the unstable region now let's see an example by simulating in q spice in order to verify this behavior what we have done is to use the same circuit that we saw in previous video but now we are adding this block here that is going to generate a delay in our circuit so basically we use an rc network with a buffer so this signal here is going to generate a pwm signal that is sent into the converter and is going to be delayed with respect to the pwm signal again here we are not using the transistor and the diode because we want to speed up the simulation as much as possible because we have to do many simulation and quite long simulations so on the right we can see the responses here in green we have the response of the PWM output here at the output of the comparator we have added one volt to separate both signals and below we have the delayed signal here PWM sub D and we can see that there is a delay that we have adjusted here with the values of R and C and the delay is around 1.6 microseconds and we are keeping almost the same duty cycle in both waves so the operating point is going to be almost the same so now with this schematic we are going to simulate the frequency response of our converter for two different delay times so we are using the same circuit that we used in previous video power electronics number 72 but now we are adding here this other part in the dot step statement in which we are stepping also the value of cd so this is the capacitor that we are using here to generate the delay so one value is one picofarad so it's almost a negligible delay and the other value is three nanofarads which corresponds to the delay of 1.6 microseconds the rest is the same as we have seen in previous video so these are the simulation results in total we have three plots for the magnitude another three plots for the phase so here in green we have the plot corresponding to the average circuit so it's not including the response of the modulator the sampling effect of the modulator another plot in red is the response including the uh, effect of the modulator the sampling effect of the modulator and now this other plot in red is the response including both the effect of the modulator and the effect of the delay here we have a little bit of change in the magnitude and this is due to the small change in the duty cycle when we are doing the delay when we are implementing the delay with the rc network but in any case this is not important this would be exactly the same in an ideal situation but the important part is the phase so here in blue we have the phase of the average circuit without the effect of the modulator the other trace here in green is the response that we saw in previous video which is the case uh, in which we are including the sampling effect of the modulator but we are not including any delay in the loop and finally the last plot here in green this one 
at the bottom is the response both including the effect of the modulator and the effect of the delay block. So we can see that the phase is even smaller and even at this point we get minus 118 degrees or close to it. So the next point is represented in Q spice as a positive phase. So if we subtract from this value minus 316 degrees, we will get a point that will be around here. So the plot will, will follow in this way with lower values of the phase. So this demonstrates also that the delay that we have in the loop is going to further decrease the phase of our loop gain making the phase margin smaller and pushing our circuit into regions that are more close to instability. Remember, all these files are going to be at this link here, so you can try them by yourself. So with this, we conclude this video today. I hope that this information is useful for your future activities. Please let me know if you have any comment or question through the comment section. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.